We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations, the United Nations, the United Nations, can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. As a result of that action today, we are announcing a new partnership with private sector to vastly increase and accelerate our capacity to test for the coronavirus. We want to make sure that those who need a test can get a test very safely, quickly, and conveniently. The next eight weeks are critical. We can learn and we will turn a corner on this virus, some of the doctors say it will wash through, it will flow through, in interesting terms, and very accurate. I think you're going to find in a number of weeks it's going to be a very accurate term. Uh, the President's the declaration of a national emergency, uh, a lot of pressure coming from lots of directions, but he did it. Jesse, what do you make of it? Uh, the President's the declaration of a national emergency, uh, a lot of pressure coming from lots of directions, but he did it. Jesse, what do you make of it? Well, it's not so much what he says, it's what he does. And when you unleash $50 billion, it's going to do a lot. The markets loved it. You know, everybody was criticizing him when he spoke on Wednesday, and the markets went down, and now he speaks, and the markets go up. So it's really about action more than anything. He's unleashed the private sector. A lot of people were expecting that when you bring in Roush and Google, and you start ramping up testing, even drive-through testing, which we've seen happen in South Korea, and people are very excited about that. So and We just have to do what it takes uh, to lessen the spread of this coronavirus. And I don't want to be the governor that waits two weeks too late uh, to take some of those steps. Uh, last, I want to say that we have had the first instance um, of an individual who has refused to self-isolate. Uh, and we have take, taken the steps um, to force um, a, a uh, isolation uh, that will be in their home. This is a Nelson County resident uh, that has tested positive left against medical advice, uh, refused to self-quarantine. Uh, we have worked with the county judges and others. Uh, it's a step I hope that I never had to take, but we can't allow one person who we know has this virus to refuse uh, to protect their, their neighbors. We can't stop COVID-19 without protecting our health workers. Countries' ab abilities to respond are being compromised by the severe and increasing disruption to the global supply of personal protective equipment caused by rising demand, hoarding, and misuse. Would you like to be a doctor or a nurse having to treat a patient knowing full well that you are not protected? That's an awful dilemma that no health worker, no health worker in the world should have to face. We continue to call on manufacturers to urgently increase production to meet this demand and guarantee supplies.
Welcome everyone, I'm Spiro, and I'm very happy to welcome back Professor Francis Boyle to the show. Uh, Professor Boyle is a professor of international law at the University of Illinois College of Law, and is the man who drafted the U.S. domestic implementing legislation for the Biological Weapons Convention, known as the Biological Weapons and Anti-Terrorism Act of 1989, which was unanimously approved and signed into law. Now, for those of you who may have missed our previous interview, I encourage everyone to watch it. Now, Professor, thank you for joining me today. Sir, uh, thank you very much for having me on my best to your viewing audience. Now, since the last time we, you and I spoke, there have been some major developments and bombshell studies that have just recently been published. Can you please uh, tell our viewers what is the latest and the significance behind this? Certainly. On uh, Wednesday, I did give a uh, one-hour uh, interview on this to InfoWars, and there is now a uh, transcript out there uh, you can find by Googling my name. Let me briefly go through that interview. I review uh, four different uh, scientific studies in, in the literature, professional literature. First, a DNA uh, genetic sequencing of the Wuhan coronavirus by uh, scientists in France and uh, Canada, and their conclusion is that it has gain-of-function properties. As we've discussed before, uh, gain-of-function uh, properties is only useful for offensive uh, biological warfare work and it has to be done in either a BSL-4 or a BSL-3 facility. And we know that uh, Wuhan <clears throat> is a uh, BSL-4 uh, facility, and it said quite clearly when it was opening up, it was there to deal with coronaviruses and SARS. SARS is a uh, weaponized version of the coronavirus. Wuhan has worked on that uh, before. There have been already reported two or three leaks uh, from there, so I, I suspect that's what happened here. Second, then, and, and you can find all these uh, scientific articles on the uh, uh, interview, uh, is a uh, scientific article reported by the uh, scientist at the University of North Carolina. It is clear that uh, if you just read through it, that they were engaged in uh, gain-of-function DNA genetic engineering on the SARS coronavirus. Uh, likewise, if, if you read the study, uh, one of the researchers there was uh, one of the top biological warfare experts from China. And he, or that, that expert, I can't tell if it's a he or a she, but the name is there, was from the Wuhan uh, uh, BSL-4 facility that's right on the uh, scientific article itself. So it is clear that uh, part of the technology here uh, involved in this coronavirus uh, came from uh, that University of North Carolina lab. Uh, the last time I looked at was BSL-3. Now, I had already condemned that lab before uh, for doing uh, gain-of-function work on MERS, Middle East Respiratory System, which is also a uh, weaponized version of coronavirus. MERS is 33% lethal. The SARS is about 10%. And what we're seeing now with the uh, Wuhan coronavirus is 15 to 18%, 15% by uh, uh, Lancet, 17% if you disaggregate uh, statistics by the Chinese government, which are uh, uh, misleading on purpose, 18% by a, uh, a British health authority. But it is clear then that there's a direct connection then between this uh, Nazi biological warfare work at the uh, University of North Carolina and Wuhan. It's just there and read it. So obviously this researcher uh, took it back uh, to Wuhan. The third article I discussed, again, scientific article, uh, someone from that Wuhan facility uh, also worked with uh, uh, scientists in Australia. 
to DNA genetically engineered uh, SARS together with HIV, which we've discussed before. And you have that uh, Indian study with the pictures and everything saying uh, that that the current coronavirus uh, involves uh, uh, HIV uh, and SARS. Now, it appears political pressure was brought to bear on those Indian uh, scientists. You know, uh, Prime Minister Modi there is trying to have good relations with China and President Xi. But I read that study. I saw the pictures. It's it's uh, uh, undeniable. Uh, so I think what happened here then, oh, and by the way, uh, that too, uh, if you read the study, clearly a scientist from Wuhan was involved with the Australian scientist and the Chinese government paid for it. So this is not a case of uh, China stealing this uh, technology. They, they bought and paid for it. Uh, they bought their way into it. So I think, Spiros, what happened then is that uh, the uh, uh, people there at Wuhan took the technology from North Carolina and the technology from this Australian study and uh, tried to DNA genetically engineer it together to create a uh, chimera of uh, three elements at least, Uh, the uh, SARS uh, uh, coronavirus, uh, the gain of function uh, technology from the University of North Carolina, and then the uh, SARS HIV technology from Australia to create a uh, a sort of a turbocharged biological warfare uh, uh, agent. We saw this with the uh, swine flu. Swine flu clearly had three elements that were DNA genetically engineered together in a uh, biological warfare uh, lab. So I believe that is what has happened here. And indeed now to uh, the final uh, study I discussed, two scientists from China itself, uh, and you can see the study there, concluded that this probably leaked out of that uh, Wuhan uh, coronavirus. So you can read those uh, four studies you know, for yourself and draw your uh, own conclusions. They're all there uh, and next to my uh, uh, the transcript. But certainly that that was um, uh, my conclusion. You'll also note that the um, North Carolina uh, 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 contract was funded by the National Institutes for Health and uh, NIAID, the National Institute for uh, Allergy and Infected uh, Diseases. So they're up to their eyeballs in this. They knew exactly what they were funding, and they were funding it with Wuhan. Uh, And and that is why then uh, we are getting total disinformation, lies and propaganda uh, by Fauci, by the National Institutes of Health, by Nye, this woman, Les Monnier, if that's how you pronounce her name, uh, and the uh, CDC. I've also discussed with you why the WHO is lying about it and covering it up. So that, I think, is the um, importance of the interview I'm uh, giving to you here today to try to, you know, cut through all this. If we're seeing all this uh, mass confusion and pandemonium, it is because uh, the highest level officials, certainly the United States government, the British government, the Japanese government, uh, and others, uh, will refuse to admit that this is an offensive uh, biological warfare agent because they're all doing the exact same thing. Uh, The United States, Britain, uh, uh, Germany, France, the Netherlands, I suspect Japan, Israel. So uh, how can this properly be dealt with if the highest level officials of these governments are are lying and and covering up uh, what what is really going on here, let alone China that's been uh, lying from from the get-go? So that is uh, my conclusion, Spiro, that that it leaked out of this lab. They were working on this uh, turbocharged uh, biological warfare uh, agent for offensive uses. Uh, Some lab worker got infected, 
this routinely happens at BSL-3, BSL-4 labs, did not realize the infection, went out, did his or her normal daily activities there in Wuhan for uh, maybe 24 days, uh, 14 days. It turns out right now the reporter that's not uh, adequate uh, quarantine. 24 days is now the estimate that comes from Yale. And at the end of uh, 24 days, came down with a fever, reported to a hospital there. No one really figured out what was going on here for a while. Uh, and, and by then it was just too late. So, uh, Professor Boyle, that is amazing uh, information. And uh, thank you for laying that out so clearly. Uh, now, the, the four studies that you reference uh, of the Wuhan coronavirus states clearly that this COVID-19 virus uh, is without a doubt weaponized and altered 100% for sure. Is is that what your analysis is of this, Professor? Yes. Yeah, just, just read the uh, North Carolina study and the uh, scientists there from the Wuhan facility. And also just read the Australian study and the scientists there from the Wuhan facility. This is uh, you know, a uh, direct connection right there. Uh, and then the uh, these French scientists and, and, and the Canadian uh, said, yes, it clearly has gain of function properties. And as I said before, that's the telltale sign of a, uh, a biological uh, warfare agent, which is exactly uh, what we know uh, University of North Carolina was working on. They even admit it. They admit how dangerous it was. They admit they uh, uh, got approval from NIH to do it. And then they got more approval from NIH to continue to do it. So now, Professor Boyle, now that we have this evidence and proof, the smoking gun, as you put it, multiple smoking guns, that the Wuhan coronavirus is, in fact, a bioweapon, does this mean that there would already be a, a vaccine, pot potentially, since the virus has been modified or engineered? Wouldn't they have reverse engineered the virus? And if so, why are we not seeing or hearing about uh, this potentially available uh, antidote or vaccine? Well. I don't really know if there is uh, an effective vaccine. What happens here, all these BSL-3, BSL-4 facilities, what they do is, and we have 12 BSL-4 facilities here in the United States and maybe close to 200 BSL-3s, they go out and scour the world for the most dangerous pathogens they can find in order to weaponize them. Then they bring them back to these facilities and weaponize them with DNA genetic engineering, gain of function, synthetic biology, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of uh, the Pentagon, et cetera. After they've then uh, weaponized these, then they say, oh, well, we're, we're really trying to make vaccines for the uh, uh, agents we've weaponized. But Fine. So then they make the vaccines that may or may not work. Uh, that West African uh, Ebola pandemic, I've already pointed out, uh, that was produced by a uh, so-called vaccine coming out of that uh, Kenema uh, BSL-4 lab run by the United States that injected those uh, uh, black Africans with live Ebola and it set it all off. Um, but even if they have an effective vaccine, which I, I, I sincerely doubt, um, those are the two components of a biological weapon itself. So it doesn't get them off the hook because the two elements of a, of a biological weapon are one, the offensive agent to begin with, and then two, a vaccine so you can protect your own people. So they might have worked on a vaccine there. Uh, I don't know. Uh, sort of they, they reverse engineer the uh, uh, the biowarfare agent they have and then claim it's successful. But that didn't hold, help uh, over there in uh, the West African uh, Ebola pandemic at all. It, it was giving them live Ebola and it, it set off that uh, <clears throat> pandemic. So I, you know, don't be deceived by this propaganda uh, on this gain of function work or any of this other uh, BSL-3, BSL-4s, all of which should be shut down immediately, that they're out there trying to develop vaccines. They're out there to develop weapons. They first DNA genetically engineer 
uh, the, the offensive biological agent itself, and then they try to reverse engineer it to produce a, a vaccine. So that's really what's going on. Now, Professor, uh, what are the enforcement procedures uh, in the Biowarfare Act that you authored? Uh, whose responsibility is it to enforce it? And aside from shutting down these facilities immediately, which I would have to agree we should do, what should be the, the process here for uh, these are flagrant violations, if, if I'm correct me right. if I'm wrong. Uh, felonies and uh, subject to life in prison, I put that in there. I was put under a lot of pressure by the Department of Justice uh, to have the death penalty and also uh, automatic wiretapping. Uh, I'm a civil libertarian. I felt that, you know, there should be a warrant from, from a judge and not automatic, but yeah, you know, I, I had to throw the dog a bone there. So I said, OK, uh, I'll give you the automatic wiretapping since we're all wiretapped anyway, all up and down the kazoo. But you keep uh, no death penalty, just life in prison. So uh, that's what it is. I, I think all these people should be prosecuted there at uh, North Carolina uh, for this. Right now, uh, uh, Spiro, however, uh, I think we're in a... Uh, containment mode and a protection mode. Right now, that's what's most important. And unfortunately, this can't be done uh, here in the United States because the highest level officials of the United States government are up to their eyeballs in this. Uh, Fauci, NIAID, NIH, CDC. So they're not going to come clean and, and WHO. So I think the, you know, the American people are just going to have to get organized here and protect themselves because obviously the United States government is not doing it uh, for them. Look at look at the uh, State Department flying all those people back from uh, Yokohama, um, and uh, knowing full well, that, you know, they're contaminating. And I don't believe right now the 14-day uh, quarantine is adequate. It, I, I think it, uh, you know, this Yale study should said it should be 24. The North Koreans are saying 30. And they should know because they have their own uh, biological warfare program there. Uh, I think that's what we need, but that that is not what happened. So there's mass confusion, pandemonium out there. And uh, the people who are supposed to be giving advice here to President uh, Trump are up to their eyeballs in this stuff for quite some time. Uh, the FBI can't be trusted because... Uh, they lied about, covered up, and destroyed evidence on uh, Amerithrax in October of 2001. Uh, I, uh, at, at the end of 2001, I called up the FBI, high-level uh, counterterrorism official there, Spike Bowman, who uh, I had met at a conference on international terrorism at the University of Michigan Law School. And after review, reading the technology there in the New York Times, which was... Uh, you know, a, 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 a trillion spores for gram, uh, and, and it floated in the air, traveled in the air. I said this could have only come out of a United States government uh, biological warfare weapons program, BSL-4, and uh, probably for Dietrich. I then called him back a second time because I had a list of all these uh, 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 programs at, in these labs. Uh, they were at that point, they were a matter of public record. I went down the list with them and then I said, and we know uh, the CIA is involved in this, too. Uh, and his response is, well, we're coordinating with Fort Dietrich. And I said, well, Fort Dietrich could very well be the problem here. Someone's uh, 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 on the reservation. It's now off the reservation. Later on, it turned out it was Fort Dietrich involved here. And, and uh, at that point, then the FBI went out to the um, Ames, U.S. government Ames uh, anthrax collection in Ames, Iowa, and authorized its destruction. So at that point, I knew full well the FBI was in on uh, a cover up here and uh, destruction of evidence. And then they, they proceeded to cover up uh, ever since. First, they blamed one guy. He fought back. So they dropped him. Uh, then they blamed it on uh, Ivan's and drove him to suicide. Uh, no one believes Ivan's uh, did it. Uh, the danger here is that uh, uh, anthrax lasts forever. So there is still a, uh, 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 a stockpile of super weapons grade anthrax out there somewhere. 
Uh, it could be at Fort Detrick. It could be at uh, uh, Dugway. It could be at Aberdeen Proving Ground. I, I don't know. But the problem is you can't trust the FBI. It, it's that simple. And so you know, you're probably going to need local law enforcement to get involved in this. Maybe the state national guard could be called up to deal with this. Uh, or in terms of federal agencies, maybe the BATF uh, or the Secret Service. But but the FBI has a long history of lying, covering up, and, and doing damage control. So you know people are going to have to get organized on uh, by themselves to to protect themselves. They they can't rely on the FBI. That's for sure. And I do appreciate you taking the time to do so. And essentially, just to recap, in a nutshell. These four studies that, that just came out recently uh, of the Wuhan coronavirus have been weaponized. These studies show that definitively by the Chinese with the help of the United States uh, and funded by the National Institutes of Health. This is unbelievable. And uh, Professor Boyle, any uh, closing thoughts? or? Yeah, it doesn't, well, it doesn't surprise me because we, we've been doing this for quite some time. That's why I drafted the Biological Weapons Anti-Terrorism Act, it was to deal with these Nazi death scientists here in the United States doing this Nazi biological warfare weapons work that I condemned for the Council for Responsible Genetics uh, in 1985. Uh, you can find that on their webpage uh, where they asked me to run a uh, briefing uh, for Congress in Washington, D.C. on this, which I did do, and said it is time to have domestic implementing legislation for the Biological Weapons Convention. Uh, CREG uh, asked me to do it. So, yes. Uh, now, <clears throat> one of the points I, I did want to address is, uh, and you did uh, uh, bring this to my attention, were these military games that were taking place in uh, Wuhan. I did look at uh, that. And my conclusion so far, Spiro, and, and I did want to deal with it because it's going around the internet, uh, is is so far this is uh, correlation, but not causation. Uh, I, I started the University of Chicago as an undergrad, uh, as a math major, where they had uh, uh, the number four math program in the country after Caltech, MIT, Harvard, and the University of Chicago. And I took uh, STAT 210 uh, statistics and probability for math majors got an A. And one of the first things we learned is correlation is not causation. And likewise, uh, I studied evidence at Harvard Law School. I regret to say I only got an A minus there. Uh, but uh, again, at best, this might be circumstantial evidence. What I have provided to you with these studies is direct evidence. I don't even know if that you know, could get admitted into court, uh, but I have provided to you direct evidence and causation. You're absolutely uh, right. Not, not, and so for now, I, I do not go along with you know, the notion that this was some type of uh, covert uh, operation over there uh, to to sabotage China. I believe they were working on a uh, turbocharged biological warfare weapon, probably in reaction to the fact that they knew we were doing the exact same thing, uh, which you can tell there at the University of North Carolina. Uh, they had their own scientists there knowing what we were doing. Um, so, and also, Spiro, I want to make it clear, I, I've never worked for the United States government uh, as a matter of principle uh, because of my opposition to the Vietnam War. I've never had a security clearance. Uh, I have no access to secret information or anything like that. I just read reputable scientific literature that's out there in the public record and then draw my own conclusions. I'm sure the Chinese do the exact same thing I do. Uh, which is probably why they bought their way into that um, uh, University of North Carolina uh, program going on. And if you read it there, it's clear that Wuhan made made a financial contribution. They acknowledged they got money from Wuhan. You might ask, why why do U.S. scientists do that? It's greed. There's no question at all about it. Uh, and, and it's a total lack of any ethical training uh, by uh, so-called life scientists. 
uh, here in America. The last time I crunched the numbers, 2015, we had 13,000 alleged life scientists doing Nazi biological warfare weapons work here in the United States, at least 13,000. So there's no ethical training there at all. All they care about is the money. And that's that's it. That's, you know, so they can be bought and they were bought. And you are, uh, in fact, a professor of law, of course. And as you stated, you have shown direct links, direct evidence uh, showing that the coronavirus has been weaponized. And it looks like even the, the Chinese university uh, did say that it likely came from the uh, level four lab there in Wuhan. And when you say... Uh, Nazi. And the, the Chinese scientists agreed with me because, as you know, I, I put out a worldwide alert. Uh, I think it was maybe January 24 saying this came from uh, the uh, Wuhan BSL-4. I have a, a list here of uh, world media uh, uh, and also uh, world web sources provided me by a uh, public relations agency uh, I've worked with. Uh, But again, no mainstream news media ever contacted me uh, when the uh, uh, big interview I did uh, on this, on uh, that geopolitics came out. I also circulated it to these lists. Even uh, I have an Illinois media list. They haven't contacted me. Uh, And then the the transcript I just sent to you, uh, I sent that out to. No one has contacted me. So it's clear that uh, I'm, I'm on a blackball uh, list. Indeed, <clears throat> to uh, show you how serious uh, this is concerning the uh, uh, West African Ebola uh, pandemic, uh, the late Congressman Walter Jones from, uh, I think he's from South Carolina, uh, contacted me on another matter, which we uh, discussed. And uh, Congressman Jones represents a big military base down there that was deploying to uh, West Africa. Uh, it might have been the 82nd Airborne. I can't remember. And Jones is a, a conservative Republican, but he's a very powerful member of the uh, House Armed Services Committee. So I said now on another matter, uh, Congressman Jones, uh, uh, I believe that this is a... Uh, biological warfare agent that leaked out of that um, uh, Kenema uh, lab. It's a BSL-4 lab that was set up by Fort Detrick and USAID uh, and also by the uh, Harvard-MIT Broad Institute. They're all in there. Uh, And so uh, your troops there that you represent are walking into an extremely dangerous DNA genetically engineered uh, a biological warfare agent. So Jones was uh, quite upset and he said, okay, uh, I will have my uh, top staffer uh, get a hold of you and you can work with him and, and, and try to sort all this out to, to get my troops uh, protected. So an email was sent and I responded on the email to Congressman Jones and his uh, secretary and the top staffer saying, here I am, I'm happy to work with you. I never heard from them again. Never. Obviously, someone threatened Congressman Jones. And he was a very powerful member of the House Armed Services Committee and a Republican. Who would have the power to make a threat like that concerning troops that he felt responsible for? And I never heard from Congressman Jones or his office again. Indeed, when Congressman Jones died, uh, I sent my condolences to his office. There was no response. And I never heard from anyone in that office uh, again. So I think that shows you what what's going on here when it comes to uh, blackballing and, and certainly keeping me out of the uh, out of the news media. Well, and controlling the narrative because it's they they are unable to control the narrative when someone uh, with your credentials is speaking truth uh, and informing people. So that's it's definitely uh, in their best interest to, to keep the lid on it for sure. And when you say Professor Boyle, uh, when you talk about and reference uh, Nazi experiments, you're not just saying that to be dramatic. I believe you're referencing Operation Paperclip, which was a covert operation at the end of World War II, where we 
the U.S. snuck Nazi scientists over here and employed them throughout agencies and governments. That is exactly correct. Uh, we deliberately brought in Nazis here, and they were, as you correctly point out, Operation Paperclip, all over uh, agencies, the United States government, that we really don't know uh, anything about how many of them there were and what they were doing. But that is exactly correct. And, you know, my involvement uh, in this, th this is just Nazi type of biological work. Uh, uh, and of course, not to exonerate the United States, uh, because uh, uh, we looked into it during World War II, uh, but we did not use it uh, during uh, World War II. Uh, Merck was involved in this right from the get-go. Uh, the National Academy of Science uh, was asked their opinion on it about 1943, and they reported back, yes, it is uh, feasible. Um, and the National Academy of Science is worthless here, too. Uh, they're up to their eyeballs in, uh, in biological uh, warfare work, uh, including DNA genetic engineering. So you, you can't I've read reports coming out of there. You can't trust what they are saying. As a matter of fact, I don't think you can trust any life scientist who, who has taken money for biological warfare work uh, from any agency of the United States government. Because they're 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 guilty here, they're up to their eyeballs in this stuff. They're only going to cover their own uh, uh, tracks, uh, and so you've got to find outside independent experts, medical doctors, uh, 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 microbiologists. We we have some here on campus, uh, uh, public health authorities who have not taken this money, and, and get proper advice from them as to how to contain this thing, assuming that can be done at this point. I, I really don't know. And if you're interested, uh, the early history of the U.S. biological warfare, uh, offensive biological warfare program is by uh, Seymour Martin Hirsch, the Pulitzer Prize winner. And he takes the story up to uh, when Nixon signs the, uh, pretty much, it came out about 1968. And it's all in there, everything. Uh, I keep it here for reference purposes. Uh, so Nixon signed the Biological Weapons Convention. But what happened, as far as I can figure out, is that the Pentagon and the CIA took it underground. And they never really uh, gave it up. And finally, it did emerge uh, 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 with into the public record, starting with Reagan, when I first tried to grapple with this problem and, and stop it. But as I said, if the U.S. government has been financing all this Nazi biological warfare work, then of course they're not going to prosecute it. Absolutely right. Uh, Professor Francis Boyle, thank you so much for your time. I hope that you will add uh, us here to your list of media contacts that you send out. And of course, you're always welcome back anytime. Uh, we look forward to having you back soon as uh, more developments are sure uh, to take place. Well, thank you, uh, Spiro. Keep up the good work, and please try to get this interview uh, circulated all over the uh, U.S. news media, uh, all over the Internet, uh, so that the American people can act on it and understand they're being lied to by the highest level officials of the United States government. They're going to have to get organized here and, and protect themselves the best they can. Well, that's absolutely, absolutely right. Thank you for that. That's Knowing that you're being lied to is the first step to doing something about it. I appear here on your show to, to try to tell the truth as I see it, yes. Professor Francis Boyle, thanks again so much. Uh, we look forward to speaking with you again soon. Thanks a lot, Spiro. Keep up the good work. Thank you.